okay <clears throat> okay hello hello again this is the second part of the video uh, the computer crashed and there was a problem with the video card I think it was when recording this video something happened I think I ran out of memory and just I have to close everything again and and restart everything so let's continue with the explanation we were we were in the graphs graphs we're explaining the graphs uh, we already explained this one this one also okay this is the these graphs this graph explains and shows shows the the pit, the pitot tube uh, total pressure and with the failure that is the yellow yellow line and the estimation as you can see in this plot um, the total pressure in blue the estimation always always follows the the true value it's not affected by by the failure in the pitot here during the descent okay so this is what this graph shows us and this is the dynamic pressure the dynamic pressure measurement that is the yellow one and the blue is the estimation so as we can see the during the descent the dynamic pressure we inject the failure here in 410 seconds and it freezes the dynamic pressure stays con constant independently of the maneuvers of the aircraft and the estimations follows the, the true value is not affected it's not following the the sensor the pitot the pitot tube yeah. okay so I think those are the <coughs> the all the graphs so right now let's uh, let's place the failure in other stage of the flight so so we go here and we just uh, okay we just enter here we double click on the mask so we put initial uh, speed we will use the stop pitot failure and let's put it in during the first part of the flight before the climb so that will be around 30 30 seconds 30 seconds or 20 let's put it in 20 20 seconds okay so in 20 seconds the failure will occur uh, before before the climb so let's see here the position so in 20 seconds look here's 100 seconds at the end of the climb the in 50 seconds we have the the climb and then we are going to put it in 20 seconds here I think it's during the turn, probably during the turn or after the turn. Let's uh, okay. So let's start the, the simulation again. So right now, uh, Simulink is uh, compiling, it's compiling this diagram in C, and it will run the simulation from a C script. From so that's that's what they call here accelerator it runs quicker if you if you compile and run the script in in C you see as in, in the language programming language C so right now the the simulation is running you see so let's see the estimation plot uh, estimation here so here the aircraft <coughs> we see the estimation is the airspeed here is the failure it will occur here in 20 seconds beta angle and alpha angle so here we will see the how it shifts to one when the failure occurs okay and as you see the failure uh, detection it will take a few seconds it won't detect because the aircraft have the uh, constant speed you see it's flying at cost, constant speed but when the aircraft climbs it will detect it will detect that change in the static pressure and it will detect the failure in that moment yeah. 
there's no problem if, if the aircraft is flying in steady state flight at constant speed. The problem is when the aircraft changes the speed. That's the problem. So here, the aircraft, look, the failure is detected at 50 seconds because it started the climb. The climb started to use the control, the control uh, signal, you speak, of changing the angle of attack here, you see, the control action. And here, we see that the, in yellow, well, I'm gonna zoom, <coughs> we can see in yellow the, the speed of the sensor goes up, you see, that's erratic, the difference is the measurement. And look, the true value is the red one. And as you can see, the estimation in blue is following the true value. So the airspeed is being estimated perfectly. And it was detected once the aircraft uh, start its climb. So the aircraft here will, uh, here we see the maneuver, let's see here position, position, it's climbing, it's gonna get here, then we'll fly the straight to level flight, all of this is at constant speed, you see here's the, the control command. So uh, now altitude is constant, and now the aircraft will do a descent, and in the middle of the descent it will turn to the west, 20 degrees. Here the blue line is the estimation and the yellow line is the real, the true value. You see that it matches perfectly, latitude, longitude and altitude. So here we start the descent, let's see the estimation, here, let's zoom the graph, Look. as we can see the airspeed is following the true value, and this is the sensor, this is what the sensor is measuring, you see that there's a difference between um, 88 and 40 is more, it's like 48 uh, meters per second in difference in the measurement by measured value and the true value see? but you, you can see how well how good this is estimating the airspeed this algorithm now because the aircraft in it is in the it's descent the static pressure is uh, is reducing is reducing so right now when we get to the same altitude the yellow line will match with the true value with the red line in the airspeed that's why they are joining because the aircraft is descending let's see here in this graph uh, here the descent the aircraft already did a turn In this plot we can see the trajectory, straight, turn, climb, descent, a turn in the descent, and then straight and level flight. Here, it, it, it stopped the descent and is flying straight and level until it will decelerate around 400 seconds it will the aircraft will decelerate the pilot will reduce the throttle and the aircraft will decelerate and it will increase the angle of attack to keep the the altitude at lower speed it's a little bit uh, not too too quickly my simulation is slow that's problem of my computer and because I'm recording this video okay so let's see the estimation here 
Now we have with the both feet joints. But you see the estimation is perfect. Okay, let's look at this is how we detect where the, we detect the failure as you can see here this is the mean the upper threshold the lower threshold and when we start the climb what we inject we get where we inject the failure look how it was detected just the the green line so the green line crosses the mean crosses the lower threshold and is what it was detected as as you see our thresholds they don't diverge too much after the failure so that's why we are uh, we always detect the failures we don't have false alarms in the way we we wrote this code okay let's go and see the estimation very slow here is going the aircraft is going to decelerate so it, it will be a drop here in the SP and look look the measurement let's make a zoom look the measurement is wrong during the deceleration the pitot is is measuring the same speed and not the deceleration of the aircraft but the estimation is following the true value as you can see here in the video in this graph look here in this region now the aircraft will accelerate again you can see how the the estimation is perfect now the aircraft will accelerate the estimation should follow the true value and it will join the measurement because we will accelerate until that speed will be around 500 seconds where we are going to accelerate you can see the estimator never loses the true value always follows the true value look here is accelerating again the aircraft is accelerating until 40 40 meters per second that's around 80 knots here is the estimator following the true value also and you see the error in, in the in the pitot too you can see here the error Pitot 2 is it's giving an erratic airspeed, but the estimator is working perfectly. It's following the true value. Okay, let's go to another graph. Mm, estimation error. It's in the airspeed, you see, it's very low. It's below 0 0.6 meters per second very low the maximum estimation error you see is during the acceleration when it accelerates and decelerates but it lowers again yes when the estimator uh, converts look the beta angle very low error and the alpha the alpha the angle of attack is also a very low error in the estimation okay the simulation uh, it's over now we can ah let's see the digital twin look look the digital twin is estimating perfectly drag cross force lift is estimating perfectly the digital twin model is working perfectly okay let's uh, move the move the failure to other uh, part of the flight so the main menu let's uh, let's put the failure um, um, well 
before the deceleration or no, let's put the failure during the descent at the turn is at 140 seconds let's put it before 130 seconds so 130 seconds okay then uh, just say it and I run the simulation again so it's compiling now it's initializing and it's running right now so let's see the let's see the plots and see how it behaves with a failure during a descent and before the turn okay here the aircraft is straight level flight it did a turn right now did the turn 15 seconds then it's going to start climbing at 40 seconds approximately here starting to climb let's see let's look for the here this is the control command in angle of attack so it's climbing starting the climb changing the angle of attack so here is climbing it will be climbing until I think 100 seconds I think then it will fly straight and level for a while with the estimation is perfect here I increase the scale you see this is the blue line is the estimation look stop stop climbing now it's straight and level flight you see the, the value doesn't change it's less than one meter per second the estimation error now it's now it's descending okay. and here's the fold you see we generate the fold generate the fold and in blue is detected few seconds just in few seconds it detected but you see the estimation the pictot 2 value in yellow it, it gets crazy the airspeed value from the pictot 2 but the estimation is following the red line that is the true value you see it's working very good it's working very good during the descent it's working very good during the ascent during the turn look here the turn was at 120 seconds so we already did the turn during the descent and during the turn look the estimation is perfect of the airspeed Euler angles or they are also working fine look the estimation of the Euler angles phi theta and c is perfect okay let's return to this graph The rest are the rest of ma the maneuvers, and the pitot tube will be crazy, and we will be flying with the estimation. The estimation value will work fine. Okay, what what other graph we can see here? The fault detection. Let's scale the graph. Okay, so you see here how the thresholds in green and blue, and the mean here. In the center of the graph give the yellow now the, the green is the the mean the the upper threshold is in yellow so as you can see the fault was detected here here perfectly and look the threshold the thresholds they don't diverge too much so to avoid if they diverge diverge too much after the fault it's possible that the mean doesn't go out from the threshold but the way it's implemented you see that the threshold they don't diverge too much so we always detect the failure we always detect the failure and as you see I have run two simulations right now no false alarms in faults no problem okay let's go again to the estimation 
Okay, the FUSI inference system. Look, it's working perfectly. No deviation. It's reading the model perfectly. The digital twin. Now, okay, we are almost finishing the simulation. You see how the pitot here we we put a saturation that when the pitot uh, signal reaches zero, just stop there because the the signal could go uh, lowering and lowering and lowering or increasing too much, but we don't want our graph to get crazy. Look here, there's the the it was the deceleration, and it's estimating the airspeed perfect. Decelerate the aircraft. Now the aircraft will accelerate. The estimator is working very good. Very, very good. Let's see the error. Okay, let's wait for the acceleration again. Let's see it. Okay, the acceleration. In 500 seconds here. Here it's accelerating the aircraft. And the estimation is perfect. Okay. Okay, I'm very happy with this. Let's let's move the failure where what what other part? Mm, we already did during the descent. We already did. Let's move the failure to the acceleration in this part. So that will be around after 500 seconds. Let's put it in 510 seconds. 510 seconds. Okay, let's let's first see the estimation error. It's almost done. Simulation is almost over. And okay, so let's zoom. The estimation error is is lower during the this. If we inject the failure during the descent, look less is like 0, 0, 0.0 point almost 0 0.4 meters per second yeah it's not too much beta and alpha is very low near zero the estimation error and the in the airspeed is 0 point less than 0 0.4 uh, meters per second like 0 0.3 something here yeah. All, always at the end of the acceleration but then it, it converges again zero okay so let's uh, run the simulation again let's move the the failure uh, what I did. let's move the failure move this failure to the acceleration part of the flight that will be in 510 seconds 510 seconds okay and let's run the simulation again it's compiling okay, it is running so let's see the graph run So this 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 failure will we will see this failure here 510 seconds it will take a, a few seconds to to converge converge no to to reach the point where where the failure is going to to be injected so right now we see that the estimation is very good in all the maneuvers. Okay, let's see the, how the, look the threshold computation, here we see the upper threshold in, in yellow, in blue we see the lower threshold and we can see here in green the mean of the airspeed okay the orange 
the orange is the residual but is the noise with the noise we are not using the noise to detect the failure because as you can see the noise are is a random process each time we run the simulation this noise will be different and in some parts you see that the noise crosses the the threshold so this will give false alarms if we use the signal the noisy signal to detect the failure in other papers that I have read I've seen that 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 they use the the signal with the with the noise I think it's better to use we are using the mean the mean the mean of the residual the mean of the residual not the signal with the noise the mean of the residual so in that way we keep it's easily it's very easy to keep the mean of the residual of the airspeed within the thresholds it's very it's easier to define the threshold and not have the false alarms because if we want to avoid false alarms here we have to widen the gap between the the thresholds and the noise and the noisy signal so that will be bad because it will not detect some some failures it won't detect some failures or it will give false alarms yeah so we are comparing the mean the mean of the residual signal and not the residual signal that's something that is worth in highlighting okay so we are almost reaching the 510 here here the uh, in 510 the failure will occur so in in around those seconds this mean will cross will cross one of the thresholds will cross one of the thresholds i think it's the lower threshold because uh, yeah the failure is look here is the mean is coming down Just because of the maneuver. Okay, going up again. So let's see how it detects the failure. It went down because of the deceleration. Now it's a, now it's going to accelerate, but the, the the failure will be injected here after 500 seconds. Okay, so here we're reaching the failure. Okay, the failure is injected right now. Look, failure is injected. Look how it rises. Look, and here it crosses the threshold. Let's zoom out and see where's the signal. Look, here crosses the set the the upper threshold. Look. The mean is crossing the, the upper threshold, you see, and the fault was detected. If we see here the, the estimation graph, look here, with the error, this is the signal, here is the, the erratic airspeed from the pitot, and look the estimation, it's following the true value. Yep. Here's the failure in yellow, and it was detected after a few seconds five seconds or less so it's working very good let's let's place right now a failure in the middle of the acceler deceleration and acceleration here in the middle we will see as in the first simulation that we did in the video that uh, the failure will be detected only after a, ch a change in airspeed so here they, the failure will not be detected because it's flying at constant speed and constant altitude but when the aircraft accelerates the failure will be detected so let's do that that will be around 450 seconds that we can inject the failure so let's go to the main menu and put 450 seconds okay so, so let's start the simulation again it's compiling you see 
initializing, loading all the initial values of the estimators and simulation. Now it's running. So let's see the graph. Okay. Let's see the graph. So we are expecting our failure here in the middle of this between 400 and 500, 450. Here the failure will be injected. The aircraft will be flying at constant altitude and airspeed. And the failure will be detected only when there's a change in altitude or speed. In this case, the speed will increase in 500 seconds and the estimator should estimate the, should detect the fall in 500 seconds and the airspeed should, should estimated airspeed should follow the true value. Okay, so let's, let's see if it works. You can see Okay, let's see the here. So we see thresholds and the mean. You see that the noise crosses the thresholds, but it doesn't give a false alarm. It doesn't detect a failure. The noise is crossing the threshold in several parts during the simulation. But because we are using the mean of the receivable and not the receivable signal, we are using it, the mean of the receiver. We are avoiding those false alarms. It's easier to calculate those thresholds using the mean of the receiver signal. Okay. So the mean will cross the threshold in 450. Yeah. Let's see other graphs. This is the pitot tube. The dynamic pressure. Okay. This is the RMS error and the maximum error, airspeed error. As you see, the estimation error. It varies, but it's very small. Zero point zero one or two meters per second, and the maximum error zero point five meters per second. Because in some maneuvers, the error is greater than in other maneuvers. Okay, with the Euler angles, the attitude is estimated perfectly. Feet at MC, beautiful. What else? We can show, okay, speed, speed also, it's being estimated. North east down, speed perfectly. Okay, we are approaching 400 seconds. But the estimation values are very good. Very good estimation values. There's no failure. The failure will be here in 450. So let's see the thresholds. Let's go to the thresholds and have a look what it happens. Okay. In 450, we inject the failure. So the mean will cross one of the thresholds. And the detection should take place. So here, okay, now, here, it will rise. Okay, what happened? It was 150. There was no failure. Let's see the other graph. Okay, here's the failure. Ah, no, it, it was... Ah, okay, yes, it was injected in, in 450, 
but but we didn't see the we, we didn't detect the failure until 500 light year yeah because it was flying at constant constant speed okay here look at 500 when he change when he accelerates the aircraft accelerates we detect the failures in a few seconds look ten, less than 10 seconds the failure was detected see here yeah the, the failure was injected here but we didn't detect it until the airplane changes the speed okay i, I got confused okay so i'm going to do it so here we can see the mean crossing the upper threshold okay and here in the estimation we can see the graph in this part of the graph how the pitot tube stays uh, with an erratic speed and the estimation follows the true value the here we see the in yellow where we inject the failure 450 450 here but the failure was detected when the aircraft changed the, the speed when during this acceleration during this acceleration we detect the failure in a few seconds here okay let's see the error of the estimation RMS with the error of the pitot of the instrument it's increasing increasing the estimation is following the true value and the error is very very small is uh, 0.3 meters per second the airspeed error the estimation error and the maximum airspeed error is around 0.45 meters per second very precise okay so this is uh, this is a brief de description of the algorithm uh, I want I want to send you this file so you can use it and you can play with with this simulation or if you want to show the simulation in a conference or I don't know if you want to do a presentation in the university so so the the algorithm is uh, it's available I want you to learn how to to use it okay it's a big file I have to share it in, a, in Google with Google or with Hotmail in some some drive Google Drive or something because it's a very big file let's open open the file I will show you the my okay it's here let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah. okay it's all these are versions of this simulation as you can see we I have run the simulation thousand of times and I have thousand of versions of, until uh, 10 years or no, 10, 10 days 10 days or one week I just one week ago we refined everything um, this is the last version so the, all, the, all these files look, all these files are all the MATLAB MATLAB scripts simulink files so if we in my lab here we have all the files let's check what files we have here so this is the aircraft model that we just played in the, the last two videos this with this icon aircraft model EKF Navig navigation system Navion 2017B 2017B is the version of my lab that I'm using um, the other the other are um, other simulation files the old files for example uh, trainer you see I set up the simulation of the radio control aircraft but it didn't work properly we tuned the the controller I get the propulsion system model the electric uh, motor model I build everything I compute the 
dynamic uh, uh, stability derivatives uh, I computed all the aerodynamics using ABL uh, I estimated the moments of inertia but I didn't have the flight test data so there's something wrong because the, the aircraft doesn't fly properly it doesn't do the maneuvers that I tell to do so with the Navion aircraft is is working very good working very good okay again the video card is in trouble okay so this is the trainer so we we should use this one this this Navion simulation is very good because the di the data is from flight tests that was performed were performed by Penn State University no Penn State no sorry um, Princeton Princeton University and they have the instrumentation similar to the one that we developed and and the instrumentation data that we have in these files is measured from our proper instrumentation our own instrumentation so instruments and flight and flight data it's real we we're I'm using in this simulation real uh, instruments and real flight data so it's real very accurate simulation and the only thing is that it doesn't have flaps but it's very easy to incorporate flaps in a further work if we have the model with flaps available available but this aircraft is capable of flying without flaps so that's why I don't have the flaps okay here there are several functions this function for example is the atmos atmosphere model model sometimes we use this atmosphere because it's better than the block that of simili simulating this file are the control parameters the one that generates the trajectory let's open the script so if you see here is initial values like altitude airspeed heading trim values autopilot limits maximum altitude climb rate sink rate turn rate well, all the limitations of the aircraft then these are the gains of the controllers the pitch controller gains the airspeed controller gains the altitude controller gains the lateral control gains heading and side slip gains side slip gains yeah so as, as you can see all these parameters are aircraft dependent aircraft dependent so they were taken from the report uh, of uh, Princeton University of the Navion research aircraft I will have to fly the radio control airplane and record or estimate all these parameters but I don't have time right now that's a uh, work for this semester but before I submit my thesis not in my thesis this other file is okay this is the control parameter for the trainer for the radio control aircraft Look. we we did it that didn't work properly because the model is not good okay these are functions of the uh, Kalman filters this is from the first Kalman filters the updates updates in single link because we, we first uh, work on MATLAB, then we move to Simulink. These are the Euler angles, uh, direction cosine matrix, from Euler to direction cosine matrix, the function. These are the fault detection parameters. And the, the, the fault detection blocks have a mask that reads these values, the threshold gain is what we multiply the, the gain that we compute we could multiply it by 3 this is the bandwidth bandwidth of the of the mean signal the residual signal this is the bandwidth of the standard deviation signal and this is the residual standard deviation initial standard deviation 
to initialize the, the feature at the beginning of the threshold computing and mean computing. So this, this was tuned by hand. It will change if we change the aircraft. So we have to tune these values by hand. Okay, this is the digital twin of the propulsion forces. This is the propulsion force, thrust force, FUSI inference system. Okay, this is a script to import the data to MATLAB for of the simulation to train the FUSI inference system. This data, look, this is the data of the FUSI inference system. It was trained at these speeds, 50 knots, 65 knots, 80 knots, 95 knots, 100 knots, 110 knots, 125 knots, 135 knots. Okay, we use uh, three epochs, yeah, and from five to seven membership functions per 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 FUSI inference system in the Takahi Suhino model. So this was the data for training here, data and data training. Okay, it's not used uh, from the simulation, it's used, these files are used. Okay, so what else? This is the initialization of the first uh, Kalman filter. So parameters to start the, the first uh, the Kalman filter. So we have to start the Kalman filter in the position of the aircraft so it doesn't, so it converts quickly longitude, latitude, uh, attitude, uh, speed, uh, uh, acceleration bias, everything. We have to initialize the, the filter. This is the in initialization of the second Kalman filter, the same uh, airspeed. We start at the same the filter at the same speed of the aircraft, 80 knots. Beta and alpha is zero because the aircraft is flying a straight and level flight at the beginning of the simulation. So these are the initial variables of the of the second extended Kalman filter. This is the integration step of the of the Kalman filter. Yeah. This is the Jacobians. Jacobians of the this is where we linearize linearize the the nonlinear model because the extended Kalman filter uh, manages the nonlinear model of the aircraft. So we have to linearize uh, in each step the model of the aircraft, the process, the process of the aircraft, the Jacobian age, yeah, F and H of the Kalman filter. These are the measurement models of the sensors, alpha vein, beta vein, the measurement model of the forces, measurement model of the GPS, measurement model of the magnetometer, measurement model of the pitot tube. This is the aircraft configuration file. So if we open the Navion, this is all the geometric, geometric and performance data of the Navion and the stability and control derivatives here, all the aerodynamic and dynamic data, the, the mass moments of inertia and the propulsion system parameter. So this is, this is if we change to the, there's, there's another file of, of the trainer, I will show you later, the trainer will have another another configuration file so we, we just if we change the airplane we replace these variables but we need these derivatives we need the derivatives this is what we get from the flight tests we need the aircraft mass and moments of inertia that must be measured the inertia of the uh, if we don't have information of inertia we can measure the inertia it's easy with the model aircraft because we hang the aircraft from the ceiling and we do some oscillations. Or we can we can get these values in during the test flights. With the Milus aircraft there was no information of these inertias. So we have to measure it in flight if we if we did the flights. 
Okay, this is the process uh, of the ex second extended Kalman feed. The process model. So, so this is all the processes, like the the equations that use the. I first tested with with the dynamic equations that use the derivatives. Later, I replaced it with the with the Fuzzy inference system uh, model. But and from those coefficients, I I compute the lift drag and cross forward coefficient. Okay. This is the process model of the first first extended Kalman filter. I did this in Australia. Remember with this. So. This is the first Kalman filter, the process of the stem. This is a function that converts quaternion to direction cosine matrix. This is, I run the, the extended Kalman filter in MATLAB uh, from simulation data. This was at the beginning, it's no longer used right now, but I'm not erasing the, the, all these functions. And these are the second extended Kalman filter update, second integration step, second all the the same functions, but for the second Kalman filter. Here, it's a this is sensor data. It was used to compute the the covariance and the variance, covariance and noise for the for the sensors data that was recorded from the from the sensors itself and then we compute everything here in MATLAB and with that we we generate this MATLAB script with the sensor parameters so this is important also sensor parameters magnetometer bias sigma noise magnetometer bandwidth this was measured from the real instruments this is a sample time of the magnetometer then with the GPS the, the sigma standard deviation of altitude speed speed vertical okay the sample time of the magnetometer you see that they all they all of them work at different sample rates emu parameters inertial measurement unit the bias initialization sigma bias sigma noise Acceleration bandwidth, accelerate, accelerate, accelerometer bandwidth, gyroscope bias, all the gyro information, the initial position, okay, the initialization of the speed, Euler initialization, duration cosine matrix, and the magnetometer initialization. So these are the sensor parameters. And these are the sensor updates for the first uh, Kalman filter, the MATLAB function, sensor update for the first Kalman filter. These are the Kalman filter equations, see, the Jacobians, the Kalman gain, the error covariant matrix, blah, 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 all the extended Kalman filter. Okay, sensor update with delay the Kalman filter because this uh, we update the sensor data but but we have to wait until the sen the sensor data comes not in each step time it depends on the sample time of each of each sensor yeah. state update state update in the Kalman filter process state update Okay, and this is the trainer configuration aircraft uh, file. The same as the Navion file, but look with all the data from the trainer. This is what I told you before that didn't work properly. We have to do flight test and get the good data for this. The good parameters of the stability and control derivatives. The inertia was calculated so. I don't have the data for the inertia. 
I, w I estimated the weight because I don't know the weight of the remote control air aircraft. I know the weight of the aircraft, but I don't know the weight of Louis instrumentation that goes inside the RC trainer that is, is a different instrumentation from the the big one that we are using in the Navion. Okay. Uh, and this is the the, the propulsion uh, the, this this was formed the Milus that is the propulsion propulsion uh, system model of the of the Milus with uh, all the propeller information, engine information. That is commented, you see. So I have the the motor. Here is the model of the electric engine of the trainer. Yeah. And the propeller. Yeah, this is the propeller of the of the aircraft trainer. It's working very good. The propulsion system is working very good. I, I tested a port. So we replaced the that model that is why it's commented in green we replace it for a model similar to the to the navion of the propulsion system but it didn't work so the the rc trainer model model that i have it has to be improved okay so th those are the files this was a a, a model simulink model of the thresholds and means that just to try it was trying if it works so it not, it's not used okay so this is that's the i hope this video give you an idea of what i did in the last six months uh, after i wrote the, the papers for the for the congress so i hope you like this this work in a lot of effort and and what we are asking is that if we can present this this uh, simulation the way it is without changing the plane and building a new aircraft model and a new automatic control and and yes and tuning again all the algorithms all the estimators uh, tuning the the low pass filters it will be a lot of work it, i won't finish this year if, if we change the, air, the aircraft so I hope uh, I hope this explanation was clear. I will I have the report. I'm writing the report. Okay, so apart from the research proposal, there is what it was very complete. I was writing the, f the last week and th during this weekend a word file to explain. Uh, how it works, but I, 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 will, I won't have this ready for tomorrow or, or Wednesday, it will take one more week. But here I'm explaining in what I tell you in, in these two videos, explaining the important parts first, fault modeling, see, I'm explaining the PITOT model block, how it works, sensor stock failure block, the residual signal mean, sensor failure detection, how it works, residual signal mean, the equations, how we compute it, I just show you the, the block diagrams, if these are the equations we use, the threshold computation, covariance modulation, explaining the scripts, how they work, so this is just a first draft and I have to improve it, it won't be ready for tomorrow or Wednesday, so Right now I have to finish uh, some wind tunnel test models for for this week lectures. I will do it. I will do that tonight, and I will uh, keep put this in standby until maybe tomorrow. No, I don't. I won't have time tomorrow to work in this on Wednesday. I can work in this on Wednesday. Okay. So I hope this video is good, good enough, and I hope I express myself uh, the better. I could. Okay, so see you later. I will upload these videos to YouTube and give you a private access to you guys. So see you, see you this weekend. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye bye.